this season. So this is the second meeting they met on January 13th. BYU beat UCF on the road in Orlando, 63 to 58. The time is now for UCF. Looking to make a late run into March. Shamari Allen at the controls. Darius Johnson to Sellers. Nice shot fake. That gets Waterman in the air. You take a look at BYU starting five. It almost might be who you don't see there. Wait till you get to see Jackson Robinson off the bench. Well, UCF doing a good job on their gap defense. Staying home on shooters on ball side. Johnson gets a screen from Diallo, who missed last game Saturday at Texas Tech with the knee. His presence is huge. Johnson toying with Waterman, but throws it away. Tried to get it to Walker. Aaron Pass, first turnover of the night for UCF. Well, C.J. Walker was posted up down low, but he, they threw it to the hand where he was covered, and he really got locked in down there. He wasn't as open as they thought. They can run things through C.J. Walker. He's been very, very key to them since he's come back from the injury. UCF takes it away as we see their starting five for the Knights. Tenth different starting lineup this season for UCF. So don't get used to those guys. Now, we felt like he wanted to go with that one. Walker is up in his face. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Walker at 6'8", Gardnell at 6'5". And when he is healthy, talking about Walker, there is no more of an athletic wing. Khalifa tees it up. Johnson is right there to clean it up. Second attempt, Diallo gets in the way, but BYU lives on to fight another day. I don't know how the first game went in Orlando. A lot of physicality, tough to get an open look. Sellers goes to Walker, who gives it right back to him after the turnover. Shamari Allen behind his back in traffic, spinning to two, no. Everything with a hand in your face so far on both ends. Spencer Johnson to Khalifa. Now with the shot fake. Now he penetrates on Allen. Up. Can't finish, but he'll shoot two. So let's take a look at head coach Johnny Dawkins in his eighth season at UCF. Earned his 300 collegiate win earlier this season, 144 of those at UCF. One of the most underrated co coaches in college basketball. Uh, he's been through it all. He's talked about the excitement of playing in the Big 12 for his program. And they've done a great job in the first year. They've lost a lot of close games, but they do have four wins in the league. And they're, they're right on the doorstep. They haven't been whole pretty much all season long. But when they are, they're a dangerous team. We know about the win at home against Kansas. And... The ever-improving home court advantage down in Orlando. The fans have really reacted well to the being in the Big 12. We had the opportunity to speak with them today. I said, Coach, you were picked to finish last. Are you happy with where you are today? He said, no. We can we can do better. No we, coach is happy this time of year. It doesn't matter what your record is. If you're Kelvin Sampson or Johnny Dawkins, Mark, nobody is happy. Both free throws were good. Walker working on Waterman. Coughs it up. Second turnover of the night for the Knights in transition. Nice look to Nell who finishes. Uh, loose passes on the perimeter. BYU is going to swallow those up. You've got to be firm with the basketball. You can't dribble drive into the gap and turn back out to the outside and throw loose bounce passes. They have to be direct, crisp passes. And here is Johnson. The maestro loses his footing and the basketball. Regains possession. They fight for it. Welcome to the Big 12. Shamari Allen gives an elbow to Trevin Nell. Marquise Pettigrew was right there. That someone will come out of there with it. And then Allen's got somebody underneath him pulling at his leg and a little bit of frustration foul. Well, I'm, I'm sure Coach Dawkins is frustrated, as are UCF fans, with the fact that Allen now has two fouls. A very important piece to that UCF puzzle. Nell bends. 
Second attempt from him after the first miss is good. Can't be on your heels as a player or as a ref in this league. And you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready for any for fast and furious action. And it's come at us right out of the gate, especially defensively, and the physicality has been present in the lane. Fourth straight game against a ranked opponent for UCF. Right from the Big 12. Trevin Nell for three. Gets the roll. Welcome to the Marriott Center. I think he's been in that spot a few thousand times over his career and very comfortable back in the starting lineup for Nell. Trevin Nell, eight. UCF, nothing. Sellers, step back. UCF just cannot get a clean look. They need some better ball movement, maybe some high screen and rolls or some handoffs up top, but BYU is on their toes defensively. Here's Dallin Hall. He's working on Antoine Jones. Another threes from Rell. This one's no good. Johnson into traffic, loses the basketball, almost their fourth turnover. There's Ibrahima Diallo with the follow, and he's no good. Diallo just rushed it. He did take your time. Step through and slam it home. Instead, he just tried to quick trigger it. Knights 0 for 5 and three turnovers. Not the star coach Johnny Dawkins was looking for. Well, Trevor Nett, Trevin, and a little Larry Bird look all the way to the right, but two guys that really relate to their players well, and that's why they've been successful throughout their careers. They adapt to today's game, but also to, the, to today's player. Nice look from Johnson to Waterman, who hammers it home. And that's great offensive rhythm. It just slipped that little pick and roll on the side. And BYU not only defensively has been sharp, but offensively is starting to get into rhythm. Jones. Stops the bleeding. Antoine Jones is a good player. He's a facilitator, but he also has that nice medium range jump shot. Waterman loses his foot and basketball goes out of bounds. Marcellus Avery hit it last. It'll stay here. You see BYU, that little fake, the ghost screen. He comes over the screen and he just slips it. And then Jones, we spoke about him, what a spark he's been as of late for UCF off the bench. He's a guy that make buckets but also run can run the team from that forward spot waterman loses the basketball it's knocked away by sellers ucf now muddying it up a little bit which is what they need to do they're a gritty basketball team they need to slow byu down they're holding opponents to 65 points a game 32nd in the NCAA. Now the problem is that UCF has struggled to score, which has allowed BYU to get out and transition. UCF still doing a pretty good job in the half court. Oh, such a good passer. You had to back off him, did Sellers. Gave him a clean look. Rattles out. Here's Jalen Sellers. He is like a sports car. So smooth. It's hard to take away that left. You want to push him to the right hand, but he changes direction so quickly, and you said he, he's so good at Powerful playing powerful basketball, but also with a nice touch in the middle of the floor Johnson pump fakes Nice defense from Jones and Payne Waterman though wide open splash now Your weak side gap defense we spoke about it earlier very important for UCF to stay home on ball side Especially on those dribble drives into the gap because BYU is trying to do just that Dribble drive and kick. C.J. Walker draws attention. Fades away. Can't get it to fall. Ball's knocked out of bounds. Looked like Nell hit it last. He did. BYU's guards do a great job of keeping their head up. And here's C. Johnson. He has no intention to score. He's waiting to find that open gap on the perimeter. See his head's up. He's not even looking at the rim. He's looking for an open man on the perimeter. And he found one in Waterman. Nine-point advantage for BYU. Omar Payne. Drops it off for Sellers. Antoine Jones, the Florida native who went to three other schools before returning back home to Orlando, says, I should have gone there from the start. Waterman grabs the board off another UCF miss. UCF 
struggled because BYU's defense has been elite so far in this game. Nothing has been easy. Triore into the game with Jackson Robinson. That's the bad news for UCF. All this is going on with them on the bench. Triore, 18 points in his last four games. He's fouled and he'll head to the free throw line. Again, here's what Hall's doing. He's trying to draw that defense in the middle, and Traore doesn't need a lot of space just to, with that big footwork and that powerful body. All right, Coach, if you're Johnny Dawkins right now, what's your message to your team at the next stop? Just got to keep playing. You got to keep playing, try to find easy baskets, try to push the pace when you can, but I don't think they're cutting hard enough away from the ball and occupying the defense on the weak side, maybe a little bit stagnant, maybe the ball sticking a little bit, just a little bit more ball movement, a little bit more player movement. Mahovsky into the game for UCF. Johnson tries to spin out of trouble, almost loses the handle. Crowd engaged. So is Johnson, but he can't finish. Draws rim. Again. Johnson doing his best to try to break the door down, but a hand in his face. Spencer Johnson can't finish. He's got four assists, almost tacked on three more points. Robinson floats up for Triore. And here comes UCF. Transition is their calling card, and Jones leaves it at the back door. Mahoski almost had a turnover. Goes into the backcourt. Here's Mills Mahoski hustling. Intentional foul called on BYU. Coach Johnny Dawkins and his staff, they were almost at the free throw line with the rest of the players. Mahofsky, just great hustle. It was going to be a backcourt violation, but he, he wanted none of that. He saw an opportunity, and he took and he seized it, and then Hall knew he was going to break away for a hoop, and he grabbed his arm. And not a smart play by Hall. He just let it go at this point in the game. There's no reason. It's just two points. It's not worth the foul or the intentional. And that's exactly what that was. You see him grab with the left hand. So Mahovsky will go to the free throw line. 78% free throw shooter. Only attempted nine free throws on the season. One of the few mental errors that you'll see BYU make. They're usually a very intelligent team. But in that, in that situation, it's 15 to 6 here. 12-25 to go in the first half. Just let him go. Just let him go. He's too valuable a player. Now Hall's probably going to have to come out of the game. So the freshman from Germany misses the first and makes the second. UCF will have possession. Quietly, the lead has gotten down to single digits. 12-25 left in the first half. Mahofsky sets the table. Staring into the eyes of Jackson Robinson in the Cougar defense. Jones, jab step. Nowhere to go against Johnson. Mahovsky tries to keep it going and can. I really like Mahovsky. Johnny Dawkins thinks eventually when he gets used to this level, he's going to be a very good player. Here's Trey Stewart into the game. Gave him such a spark in their win Saturday night against Kansas State. Robinson's off the mark, but Triore an offensive board. He's bullying Diallo to the basket, who rejects him. And that's why Ibrahima Diallo is the leader in the Big 12 in blocks at 1.9 a game. Yeah, Spencer Johnson in the corner, he just he looked him off. He said, I'm going to take it myself, but he probably should have pitched it to Johnson for an open three. Diallo on the block quickly, double team. Ten on the shot clock. Mahofsky off the glass and in. He's had an immediate impact. He's shown some confidence out there. He's pretty feisty and coming from Germany just as a freshman, though. He's Johnny Dawkins going to give him some minutes tonight because they need offense and he can provide it. Spencer Johnson leaves Langford in the dust. And off the bounce to the left, creating an angle in traffic, finishing with a soft touch with the shot blockers in the neighborhood. Langford carves his way to the lane. Is knocked to the floor. 
A nice aggressive move will earn him a couple of free throws. Eight point advantage for BYU from Provo. You hear the crowd getting a little louder here. It was kind of like a, a late arriving group, but now it's almost full. 19,000 strong here at the Marriott Center, and they get loud. That is the student section. They call that the rock. Now, jo Johnny Dawkins has a lot of depth. And he's trying to just roll with the depth tonight, just trying to find that right mix on the offensive end. Langford, one of two. Into the basketball game, pulling the rebound down is Richie Saunders. Oh, here is Trey Stewart. Cat-like quickness. One of the best athletes in the country, according to Mark Pope. Trey Ore. Johnson. Wow, he is so good at finding daylight and sprinting to it. Well, one of the things you have to do against BYU is guard your yard. you got to make sure you play one-on-one -on -one basketball with your offensive player that you're defending because you, there's not going to be a lot of help because they have to stay home with the shooters. And BYU is taking advantage. They're trying to they're beating UCF off the bounce. Mahovsky controls. He has been a bright spot early on for UCF. Five on the shot clock. The freshman's going to have to do something. Tierno Silla just into the basketball game. Barely realizes the shot clock is going to expire. And it does. Well, you'll see UCF's deep defense. They're airtight off the ball. And here, Johnson off the bounce. There's no help coming in. When the help does come, it's way too late. Now, do you attribute the lack of help because everybody, like you said, is so locked in on their guy? A little bit, but on both sides, either there were defenders in the lane that had their head turned, and they didn't see both. You have to see both just in case there's a 9-1-1 and the guy's driving all the way to the rim. Jackson Robinson had the game-winning three Saturday night against Kansas State. He is a streaky shooter if he gets going. Can he tonight? Layoff to the start gets his own rebound though and will go to the free throw line well, He is an exciting player Yeah, it was a good time good job. He's in traffic here kind of forced the issue, but found a way to get Retrieve his own miss didn't see much of a foul there, but this was a little bit on the arm Why he was very adept to is if they do get a rebound in traffic they turn to the outside and Try to find an open man for a three. You talk about rebounds. So far tonight, the Cougars have six offensive rebounds. And with Ibrahima Diallo back in the starting lineup, he had nine against BYU in their earlier meeting in January. But so far, so good for BYU on the offensive glass. Now, BYU can beat you in a lot of different ways. That's what makes them good. Everyone talks about their three-point shooting. But if they have an off-night three-point shooting, they find other ways to win. And they did that against K-State. The other night, they are bad from the free throw line. They got out-rebounded, but their consistency on offense and not turning it over got them the win. Pressure extending, giving the Knights some problems. Seller robs for pain. Crowd is hushed. Well, good job by UCF attacking that pressure. They were spaced out. They flashed to the middle, and BYU never got organized or got a good trap. Richie Saunders, the energy guy, says, hey, I can shoot a little too. That was a good step back by Saunders. He left Darius Johnson kind of flat-footed. On the retreat to play him off the bounce. And Saunders with the step back and the size at 6'5 to shoot over the top. Darius Johnson, the floor general, finds Mahoski. He has not been shot tonight. Misses his second three attempt. Trevin Nell with the head fake. Draws the foul. Here breaking the press UCF does a good job taking their time, but they're attacking it a little side pick and roll and Johnson goes underneath it with no support over the top You cannot go underneath ball screens against BYU So Nell's at the free throw line Eight free throw attempts so far tonight for BYU as they've done a nice job of getting to the rack on the other side of that, just four for UCF as Nell hits his first. Thirteen point advantage now for BYU. Trevor Nell on the night, nine points.
double figures with 839 left in the first half. Sellers really having trouble finding his rhythm. Foul on the floor. How do you get Jalen Sellers into the game? Well, I think you got to move him away from, away from the ball, kind of get things going away from him, then let him catch the ball on the run coming from the weak side because obviously he is at the sc top of their scouting report. And he hasn't been able to find any room to operate. Knights need a bucket. Langford. Looks like he should be a fullback on the UCF football team. But powers his way to the free throw line once again. So the foul zone, Triore. So Langford at the free throw line trying to cut the lead to 12. So, with this lineup in without Darius Johnson, it's been hard for Sellers to find any room because we're doing a lot of helping off the ball. All right, mark your calendars, folks, because this is going to be good. The 2024 Phillip 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship, the 12th through the 16th of March in Kansas City. Every single minute of every single game is available at Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. ESPN plus.com so two made free throws UCF hanging around here early Jackson Robinson would like to extend the lead Omar Payne rips the rebound and here come the Knights Sellers to his left gets a screen from Payne finds daylight and now all of a sudden it's just a 10-point game. That's a smart play by Johnny Dawkins. Use that side pick and roll. Let Sellers operate with either the opportunity to go baseline or take it in the middle. He's got such a good mid-range game. Trey Stewart had such an impact. Just nine minutes against Kansas State. Coming off the bench. BYU's bench with guys like Richie Saunders has been huge. Another miss for the Cougars. And we've got a stoppage. And down on the floor. See him there. That is Omar Payne. Tip. Wonderful, but yeah, everyone really raves about Taylor Hendricks, not only as a player, but as a person. And I have to speak with Danny Ainge, president of the Jazz, before this game tonight, and they're very excited. He said he's played very well over the last month. Was used as defensive stopper last night against Steph Curry. Here's Sellers. Defense gets in his way, foul on the floor. So there you see it. Last year, this is a guy coming into the season last year, Coach. He wasn't even on anybody's NBA draft board. I mean, you want to talk about shooting all the way up after a wonderful freshman campaign. Oh, what a worker. Everyone raves about his work ethic, and Tony Dawkins did a nice job of developing him. And Spent some time in the G League up and down, but the Jazz, I think, they're trying to go young, so he'll get some more minutes here down in the second half of the season. Sellers elevates his way off, but there is Diallo. They're going to need that from him. Nine offensive boards the last time these two teams locked horns in January. Diallo should just plant himself right on the weak side of, of the offense and just try to get those offensive rebounds because it's just so hard to block out. 6-0 UCF run over the last two minutes. Now, can't get by Jones. Khalifa haven't called his name too much tonight. Four on the shot clock. Can now create his own shot. No, another turnover. Here comes Sellers in the gang. Langford, nice defense. Hall stripped it, but C.J. Walker has it. Langford sets the table. So BYU, they're playing a soft man to man because... UCF doesn't really have many shooters on the floor. Basically, it's Sellers and everybody else. Here is Jones. Loses Khalifa and finds the bucket. Has something to say for the big fella, too. The lead is six. Antoine Jones, very explosive off the bounce. And important for him. UCF has a good ball hand. Cooper's haven't scored in three minutes. 
So here's Dallin Hall. He has two fouls. Finds Daylight to his left. Drops it off for Khalifa, who goes off the glass. Wow, he is crafty. He is crafty, that's for sure. It's beats it from the outside, but he's got some moves around the basket like Foose, his teammate on the inside. Missed last game, or excuse me, missed a couple games with the flu, was back last game, had eight points and six assists in the win against Kansas State. He is vital. Diallo, double team by Jackson and Khalifa in big time trouble. Gets out of it and finds Walker who hammers it home. That was a good job by Diallo. He just took his time in the trap. I, BYU, I was surprised they kept the trap on him, but what they didn't do is they didn't rotate on the back side. Trevin No puts it in reverse. And here's Khalifa. Too many steps for Big Fella. Diallo's really making his presence felt first on the offensive end, just doing a good job. A little left hand delivery right, right over Khalifa. Gives a little dose of his own way he plays, but Diallo has done a good job out on the perimeter. Some of the UCF switches, he's been matched up to, uh, on some perimeter players on Nell, on Robinson, on Johnson. He's done a good job moving his feet. You see him right now take a trip to the bench. He is back after missing last game against Texas Tech. A game which, woof, looks like they may have won if he was there. Well, he's playing extremely hard tonight. He's doing a very good job defensively. Mahovsky back to Payne. Wasn't expecting it. Foul on Khalifa. Good to see Payne back in the game after he went down with what looked like a lower leg injury. And there is Coach Mark Pope. Last time these two teams played BYU won it. That was the 100th of Pope's career. Backdoor cut for Jones. No look pass underneath for Payne. Wow, that looked good. Well, UCF's ready for that back that baseline trap, that kind of blindside trap. That time they didn't really get a trap going, but backside of BYU got caught ball watching. 12-2 run for the Knights as Nell's shot is off the rim and out of bounds. UCF got back in this game. Good to have. And, and UCF's defense has been much better. They're getting out on the shooters. Doing a good job on the glass. One and done. And they have attacked in the paint. They have 16 points in the paint. We saw six of them right there. Mahovsky. To Omar Payne. Payne working from the elbow finds Sellers. Jones controls. Floats outside the top of the circle. Carves his way to the hole and is rejected by the 6'11 Noel Waterman. Here comes Stewart. Johnson. Peekaboo pass for Triore. Can't finish. Underneath Payne rips the rebound down. Silla was in the neighborhood. Just his presence, his size. He didn't go for the pump fakes. He just went straight up, and it bothered Traore. Sellers has got a hit clean. Looks like that if UCF is going to win. Trevin now for three. Waterman. He gets contact from Jones at the foul. UCF very, very fortunate. They didn't come back and match up and... Nell was wide open in the corner, no one even near him. So that's the eighth team foul on UCF, and that'll put BYU in the bonus. Eighty-two percent free throw shooter. Waterman hits his first. So a game that started off almost felt a little clumsy, and, and you feel now it's picked up the intensity, the energy, even in the arena. Well, UCF did a good job in the first game in Orlando defensively against BYU. Their issues have always been scoring. You know, they start to play better on the offensive end. And what you really have, Pete, is you've got two very good defensive teams battling it out in the half court. So the lead is extended to six. 
No field goals for BYU in their last three minutes. But now it's UCF's turn. Mahovsky robbed for Payne. Now a little miscommunication there. Mahovsky was going for the floater. Payne was going for the alley-oop. Looked like he might have made it, but, you know, at least they're being aggressive from Johnny Dawkins' perspective. He, he's got to like that Mahovsky's given him some good minutes. He's able to dribble, penetrate in the gap. He can make an outside shot. Khalifa, six assists on Saturday against Kansas State. Here's Johnson. Rejection by Payne. Came out of nowhere and threw it. Antoine Jones loses the handle. Backbreaker for the Knights. Now Jones was just nowhere to go down there. He's going to get the ball back out, be patient. And here, just good look at the top by Payne. Almost the goal to anybody. Pinched it right before it hit the glass. Trey Stewart directs traffic and gets it to Johnson. Johnson and C.J. Walker, two grown men, been around college basketball for a long time battle, and now it's Khalifa and Payne. Johnson pump fakes from the corner. There's Trey Stewart. He likes his odds. Off the heel, no good. Whistle and a foul will go the other way. I'm not sure Mark Pope liked that shot by Trey Stewart. He's going to let him play freely out there, but he's not a good three-point shooter. He's going to try to attack on that ball reversal and the pit, pit, pitch back out to the perimeter. Interesting time of year where we see players emerge. We talked about it. Trey Stewart yeah, played several games where he didn't play at all, Coach, and then last minute splashes onto the scene, or excuse me, last game with nine points and a huge impact. The same thing can be said for Jones on the other side of that for UCF. Well, you got to keep working. And, you know, today's day and age, a lot of these players want instant gratification or else they're hitting the send on port, going to the portal. But during the season, you've got to keep grinding. And Mark Pope's rewarded Stewart. And Johnny Dawkins, Jones as well. There's Khalifa. And Jackson Robinson, who's been quiet so far tonight. Good job by Mahovsky on Robinson. Khalifa, pump fake. Barreling to the lane, drops it off for Waterman. Waterman, step back. Out of bounds, last touch by Khalifa. It looked like officials will talk it over. It looks like it's going to stay here initially. Oh, that should have been BYU, uh, excuse me, UCF ball. Khalifa it wasn't even open. They shouldn't have passed it to him, but... Maybe that's a good call. Looks like Sellers did tip it last. Jackson Robinson launches. Hits the three and he'll have a shot at four. That was from Salt Lake City. Goodness. Johnny Dawkins can just shake his head and smile and sit down. Like, are you kidding me? Just to close out a little late. Gets into the body. Good call. Robinson hit the big one on Saturday night to ice the game against Kansas State. And he's got that ability. So a chance to convert the three-point play. And extend the lead to 10. 8-0 BYU run. Check that 6 up. With soft pressure here. Let's see how they handle it in the backcourt. Jalen Sellers from the wing back to Langford. BYU in their matchup zone. Langford has been aggressive tonight and it's paid off. Dishes to Sellers this time. He can't get the three to fall. And Diallo is hit with the offensive foul. Battle inside and bodies colliding. You could call that on pretty much every play. <laughs> so we go the length of the floor and give Khalifa an opportunity to cash in. It's just two big guys fighting for positions. Really play on. Khalifa's first falls.
quite the advantage in the first half from the free throw line. 13 of 14 on the night. Make it 14 of 50. 15 free throw opportunities in the first half, Coach. Well, after their struggles on Saturday night, they've bounced back. They're a much better free throw shooting team than they showed on Saturday. And Red center. Starting to wake up. Mahovsky, who has emerged as a key player tonight for UCF, takes it across the timeline. Silla almost loses it. The 6'11 stretch regains possession and finds Sellers. Sellers wants it. Can he get it? No, but Silla grabs the offensive board. Good job by Silla. He's getting some good minutes down low, and they're going with the two bigs. Trying to play power ball. Into the paint. Silla has X Factor written all over him. Blankford controls now. Four on the shot clock. Between his legs. Off the glass and in. Good job with the lefty going the other way. Finishing through contact. It is a 10-point game, and Mark Pope wants to talk over this last possession with 11.2 seconds left on the clock. Being an elite team, not only in this league, but in the country, and their first year in the Big 12. What do you like coming out of the huddle for the Cougars, Coach? They're just going to run their stuff. And they're going to set the high ball screen, see if they can get a three or Traore at the rim. Hall, oh, like an ice hockey player, underneath the net goes to Robinson! Nothing but the bottom of the net as the time runs out in the first half. Jackson Robinson finishes strong as they head into the locker room. Well, Robinson start beat up on the boards and they fouled way too much But their issue is on the offensive end of the floor just to get any consistency not only from the perimeter, but Tacking from the wing as well Second half underway from Provo Risky pass batted away by Diallo, but Hall gets it right back Diallo's done a good job guarding Khalifa on the outside that length has bothered him He hasn't been able to make those pinpoint passes Waterman, that was a pinpoint pass you talked about. Late whistle. Looks like Waterman will head to the free throw line. Coach, I get the feeling by looking at your face. Folks can't see it at home. You didn't love that call. Well, you know, I didn't have the angle, obviously, and it's not about the call. It's just Johnson got beat back door. Not much there, as you can see. But, you know, Darius Johnson just got caught ball watching. You cannot do that when you're playing Khalifa because he, he just needs the smallest crack in the window, and he'll find that opening. He is one of the best big man passers in the country and maybe just one of the best passers in the country, period. Now they've got a lineup full of good passers, BYU. That's why they're so hard to guard offensively and combined with their ability to knock down the three. Second half is when that BYU depth could be a real weapon for Mark Pope and his team. They had 30 points off the bench against Kansas State. Mari Allen back in the game after getting saddled with two quick fouls in the first half. Explosive to the rack, around and out. Felt like it was halfway down. That was a good move by Allen. Oh, that's what UCF needs to do. Just try to break that defense down on ball reversal off the bounce and get an angle to the rim. Drifting between half court and the top of the key. Mel goes to Hall, who's between his legs. Nice lob for Khalifa. Extra pass. Waterman dials up. Gets through. Now the recognition of where your teammates are on the floor. No one's better than that than Khalifa. Can CJ Walker quiet the crowd? He can't. 16 to 2 run for the Cougs when you go back to the first half. They always have somebody on ball side in the corner. Khalifa so calm and cool under pressure. Well, this is what you call the extra extra Khalifa feels the pressure from the weak side He sees that Johnson is leaving his man wide open comes in runs at him leaves him wide open in the corner BYU had made 14 straight free throws up until that point Sellers he's gonna have to hit these and he catches in on that one good job by Darius Johnson though drove into the gap head up Found his teammate Sellers on the wing. Jalen Sellers can make it look easy. Ooh. 
Snell to the hole. He beat Sellers that time, and Sellers was too late. Well, that's the thing. When you're guarding BYU, you have to stay home, especially on ball side. So that puts a lot of pressure on you to make sure you guard your man one on one and not let him get to the rim. That time, Sellers let Nell go by him. Great exchange between you and Coach Dawkins today at shoot around. He said, hey, they space out so well, you got to guard your yard. Sellers one on one with Waterman. Here's Johnson. He's been so quiet offensively. Barreling to the hole to two. Can't do it off the heel. Coogs on the run. Waterman, nice shot fake. Leaving Johnson in the dust. But wow, he is gobbled up by Diallo. Hits the floor. Looks like he'll shoot two. Again, guard your yard. This is what Johnny Dawkins spoke about in this. The blow by Waterman gets all the way to the rim and Diallo gets him with the body. Clean block up top, but he gets him in the midsection. So the fouls on Diallo, that coach just said. His second of the game. 15 straight made three throws for BYU. Well, that's why BYU is so hard to defend because they take what the defense gives them and tonight it's been drive and kick or if they stay home drive and get it all the way to the rim and get fouled Jamari Allen leads into the lane Diallo likes his odds against Khalifa but the ball is stripped and here comes Hall Johnson elevates draws iron out of bounds It'll go the other way. That was a good post up by Diallo, but he's got to be aware that BYU will dig in, not only from the top, but from the backside. And he's got to be aware that he can't put the ball on the floor erratically. Allen drifts to the right side now. Puts it in drive, picks up his dribble. CJ Walker with Moxie to the hole. He'll shoot two. Just an experienced big CJ Walker is and you can see the way when he has the basketball There's just a confidence about it. he's so powerful But you've got to play him off the bounce because he's not a good three-point shooter, but sometimes it Doesn't matter the guys are so strong and creative and quick and tough to the rim It's he just barrels through the door even if you are laying off him a bit Fifth year senior Sanford Florida native was a five-star recruit, went to Oregon, has had all kinds of knee trouble. In the lineup tonight at 6'8", 215 pounds. With a shot at making the second end here. He misses both. Waterman with the rebound. Scrum on the floor. Hall comes out with it. Hall probes. Sellers looking to stay in front of him. Khalifa, we've got a collision. And we've got a foul on the floor. That one will be on C.J. Walker, who doesn't love it. Third personal foul on Walker. You've got to have your head on a swivel when you're defending BYU because they do such a good job. If you play the screen one way, they're going to cut back the other way. And and they cut extremely hard. Oh, Hall is like a surgeon. He's got that great vision. Drops it off for Waterman, but he's rejected by Walker. Good job by Walker. He was close enough to Waterman to close out. He didn't get into that gap and overhelp. on the shot clock Hall inside to Jackson Robinson who was always ready to elevate and pull the trigger Robinson draws two and a nice steal by Marcellus Avery just into the basketball game Knights on the run Avery off the glass and good good weak side defense by Avery on that possession he read that pass perfectly Robinson kind of was off balance and let it float too long in the middle of the floor
Khalifa almost has it taken away, and it is taken away. Here's Darius Johnson draws some contact. He'll go to the free throw line. That's a seven steal for UCF on the night, Coach. UCF is very active. You can only control what you can control, and that's your basketball team. You keep them together, and if the coach starts feeling the pressure or acting differently than he normally does throughout the season, then the team will feel that pressure too and start playing forward. And you see Joe Lenardi's projections <laughs> as we go right back to the to the phones and Joey Brackett, right? You save your <laughs> uneasy moments from when you turn out the lights at night and you look at the walls. <laughs> you feel like they're coming in at you. But. <laughs> oh, we've got a travel. So two quick points by Johnson out of the timeout on the free throws. And another turnover for BYU. So maybe the door cracking open ever so slightly now for UCF. Good job by Johnny. Doc is out of that timeout. A little quick sneaky press. And BYU tried to be with the pass. Mark Pope said just take him off the bounce and go. UCF has generated 19 turnovers. Avery trying to generate more points. He'll go to the free throw line with an opportunity to do so. So this most recent sequence for BYU feeling a little clumsy. UCF trying to take advantage. Well, UCF can make you feel uncomfortable. There's no doubt about it. So you got to stay with running your stuff. Be confident with the ball. You cannot be loose with the ball against UCF. Because their length can be troublesome. And you know, good job of not letting BYU get into a rhythm. They're using their length and their long arms for deflections and steals. UCF now 12 points off turnovers. Pressure is extended. Hall finds a little bit of trouble and gets it to Johnson. Jackson Robinson to Hall who makes it over the timeline. Lob for Triore. Way off. But it goes off the backboard into the hands of Hall. Shot clock now at 15. Press bothering BYU just a little bit, making him feel uncomfortable. Paul threads the needle to Triore, who cannot find the handle. He's been unable to find his rhythm tonight. And we go the other way once again. A long UCF defense giving BYU a little bit of a problem. Darius Johnson creates his own space and drains the three. Good job by Johnson. He had an uneven first half, only played about nine minutes. They need him to score. Another turnover, and we'll head the other way. Ball on the end line. I'll tell you what, this is shades of Michael Jordan in Salt Lake City in 1997, right? A little push off, nothing there. Good little step back, but last possession, BYA trying to overpass in the lane, and it's very hard to do that against UCF because of their length. 8-0 UCF run over the last 1 minute and 27 seconds. Jamari Allen, wow, to his left, throws it down. Nothing Richie Saunders could do but watch. That's what UCF's going to do. They don't have a lot of good three-point shooters, but they can do that. And now this pressure's bothering BYU. Wow, Johnson turnover, Jones extra pass. Dropping it in is Avery, and calling the timeout is Mark Pope. You see Taylor Hendricks cheering his old team on. Seven point lead, 12 0 run over the last 147. And there he is, who engineers this defense, Johnny Dawkins, in his eighth year at UCF. Johnson finds double team, more trouble for the Coons, possibly. Here's Richie Saunders looking for the seas to part. They don't. He finds Hall, step back, Trey. Exactly what the Cougars needed. Well, they needed that. They just attacked. They, they didn't attack. They weren't back on their heels. They beat the press, not to beat it, but they beat it to score. Nice look. Threading the needle to Avery was Jones, and we see the finish by Payne. UCF's getting comfortable in their own right on the offensive end. They're, they're moving the ball, making the extra pass. The ball's not sticking. Priore, who has had a rough night so far working on pain. Dallin Hall sees a crease and barges right through. 
He has taken over. A quick five points. Opportunity at six. You see, they got a little tied up on that little pick and roll on the side. It really wasn't much of a screen, but Jones got out of his stance and Hall found a little bit of an angle into the lane. Hall completes the three-point play. Lead is extended now to 11 once again for the Cougars at home. They are 12 and 2 in this building. Jalen Sellers, the leading scorer for the Knights, bobbles it, regains control, and goes to Johnson. Johnson into the teeth of the BYU defense, no problem. That's what. Darius Johnson did not do in the first half. Now he's just being really aggressive, under control to the rim. A UCF team that struggled to score in the first half has made six straight field goals. Oh, Saunders. Talk about a needle in a haystack. Uh, that's exactly what Mark Pope told his team in a timeout. Just go make some plays. Don't worry about getting organized. The pressure is so hard on the outside and in full court that you can't try to, you can't be robotic. You've got to attack. Jalen Sellers, all kinds of contact. He'll head to the free throw line. Now Sellers, that's what he does. He's so good changing directions. It gets you off balance defensively. And you try just to move your feet. You can make it look like there's a foul, but it looks like Sellers hooked tall on the way in. Free throw shooting has been an issue tonight for the Knights. Seller shooting 86% on the season. This is the first. 7 of 14 on the night is Johnny Dawkins' squad from the charity stripes. Spencer Johnson, the oldest player to suit up this season in Division I basketball at 26 years of age. Showing that old man game. Knocked out! Now almost had a shot at a four-point play. The roof would have come off this place. Now Johnny Dawkins did not like that at all. And thought Nell kicked his feet out. But the offensive player has the right to come down in his space, and that's where the, Avery committed the foul. He got into his offensive, into the offensive cylinder of the shooter. So Atiki Ali Atiki is getting set to check into the basketball game alongside Shamari Allen. The, the reason I bring up Atiki is literally moments ago, he was on the sidelines, but now he is into the basketball game. He's a good player. He's hasn't played in the last game and a half. It's a little stiff. He's trying to get loose. <laughs> he was in a golf shirt and dress pants 15 minutes ago. Well, better than a suit. <laughs> And there he is, like you said, getting lathered up, his team up 12. Shamari Allen, he's in a bit of a groove. Mahofsky hasn't called his name since the first half, fouled on the floor. Twelve point lead for the Cougars at home. Looking to go 12 and 2 at the Marriott Center level of talent they had coming in out of the West Coast Conference, but this is a well-oiled machine, and the reason you have to like BYU a lot as a, as a team that could go far in the tournament is they can win in a lot of different ways, and if you don't play them on the three, they can beat you that way, but their defense is elite, and they're tough, they're scrappy, they've got a lot of interchangeable parts. Big stop there for BYU. Jackson Robinson into the basketball game. Controls in front of his own bench. What great burst and great vision. Drops it off for Johnson. who will go to the free throw line. 
This is what we were talking about, Pete, though. The way they play tonight is contradictory to what they usually do, but they're taking what the defense gives them, and that's drive into the paint because they're playing being played so tight out on the perimeter, the threes are not there. So you've got to find another way to score, and they're doing that by getting in the free throw line. 21 of 23 on the night from the free throw line, BYU. Johnson knocks down his first. Ten points on the night for him. The Cougars looking to withstand quite the flurry from UCF. The second one is good. Not an empty seat in the building. And the crowd chance of defense. Both teams shooting the lights out here recently. Sellers knocks it down. Oh, that's a great play by Sellers because Johnson was doing a good job of taking away that left hand, but he just found a way just to get that slight angle. He's so good because he can elevate with the step back. 10 points for Sellers. UCF has made seven of their last eight field goal attempts. BYU has hit three of three. Some of that rust showing for a Tiki Ali Atiki. Yeah, the, the pressure bothered him on the perimeter, but you watch Sellers here. Johnson's doing a great job taking away his left hand. He bodies up on him, but Sellers is so strong and long. He can shoot right over the top. Sellers, boy, he's lathered up. 12 points for him. Now he's only 6'4", but he plays a lot bigger with that length and also the powerful body. Jackson Robinson. Snaps it to Saunders. Out of bounds. Nobody on UCF touched it. Knights basketball. Well, he's trying to pitch it to the opposite corner, and they, they like to do that. And Saunders was semi-open, but the pressure on the basketball bothered Robinson. Shamari Allen at the controls. Sellers coming by you in a zone. Walker beats the zone, showing off that feathery touch. Good job. They extended out on the perimeter. The middle of that zone was open, and Walker is so good at flashing in from that weak side. Mahofsky and Johnson banging away. Mahofsky giving him fits. Grabs the board. Allen in the forecourt off of the feed from the freshman. He'll pull it back out. He and Saunders collide. So we've got a foul on the floor. Coach, take a look at this. Just a nice little move right to the middle of the floor by Walker. He just posts it up, but there was nothing on the box, so he just created a little space with that fadeaway in the lane. How much as a coach did you like seeing that? How quickly they reacted to that zone and took advantage? They're well, uh, they're well schooled. Both these teams, we know that. I mean, they understand through the scout report today, but right now BYU having some issues defending without fouling that puts them in the bonus with nine minutes and 30 seconds left in the second half so the knights it's been a bit of an adventure from the free throw line tonight eight of 15 walker at the free throw line where he is 0 of two tonight make it 0 of three Hall draws the crowd, finds Khalifa. Now that's just miscommunication. That's a, an air defensively. They stayed two with the ball. Diallo stayed out. Khalifa was wide open. Nobody rotated over for the short roll. 
115 assists on the season for Dallin Hall. That's more than he had all of last year. Takes the rebound from Khalifa and heads into the fourth court. That ball is like a yo-yo for Hall. He finds Johnson. In and out. Knights on the move. The lead is 10. Sellers. Bang! With the left hand. And he'll slow the ball down soon enough against Sellers. That's what will happen. And he just, he saw that opening and steamrolled to the rim. You can hear a pin drop right now in the Marriott Center. Khalifa tries to wake him up. Walker says, no way. Extra pass to Allen from Walker. In and out. Probably not the best look. A little impatient that time. UCF needs to play, continue to play their way. Jamari Allen gets tied up with Spencer Johnson. Possession goes to UCF. Well, Jalen Sellers has been aggressive in the mid range, has been superb. Well, he knows a little bit about elevating too as we turn back the clock to the 1987 dunk contest. Take a look at this photo. We'll wait on the photo. I can't wait to get to it, but we'll wait on it. <laughs> wait till you see it, I promise. Jalen Sellers behind his back. Went to the well one too many times. Oh, good job by Jackson Robinson. He, he closed him out on the drive and then got up and contested. Nell draws a double team. Threads the needle. Another huge block. This time it's Omar Payne, his second of the night. BYU's doing their BYU thing with Khalifa. And he's getting that angle, but this is just great resistance timing at the rim. Fifth block of the night for UCF. Protecting the rim. That's how you keep teams to under 64 points a game. BYU looking to surpass that soon here. Hall working on Avery. Picks up his dribble, goes to Nell. Five on the shot clock. Nell bodies with Payne, tries to get it to Khalifa, who flirts with another block, and Payne was in the way to obstruct the shot. He was, but... Marquise Pettigrew came up with a foul right at the end of the clock. He's two of two tonight from the free throw line. And his team has already attempted 25 free throws. Gets his first. Marcus Pettigrew warning. The bench, UCF. Johnny Dawkins is the guy that needs to argue the calls, but he's got a couple of sisters <laughs> over there that are better back up a little bit. Yeah, he had some help. You see the UCF coaching staff? Yeah, they didn't like the call either. Hey, they're all fighting. At this time of year, everybody's got to fight for <laughs> what they need. And, uh, UCF certainly has shown well with their fighting spirit. It's just lacking some offensive execution at times, but their defense has been really good. Allen floater is off the mark, but we've got a whistle, and it looks like a foul. Atiki Aliatiki commits a foul. He has seen limited time tonight after not playing at all last game and not at all in the first half tonight. And here on the blockout, it's good call. It's tangled up with paint inside. UCF is very difficult to block out because they're so long and they can go over the top and get rebounds out of their area. When you mentioned the rebounds, and it's got to be in the head of the Cougars. This is one of the only five opponents they played all year that is out rebounded BYU they did so in that first matchup in January as you see another offensive board and Allen we've got a whistle before the slam took that extra step down on the baseline got called for traveling but UCF will set up the pressure we'll see how BYU attacks it 
Yeah, they have 15 turnovers tonight. They have collectively in the two games before this had 15. Oh, Ali Atiki says hello. Well, that's a better job by BYU, obviously. Just attacking it to score, not attacking it to beat it. Sellers, the lefty, off the heel, skying for the rebound is a tiki. Last touch by the Knights. Uh, space the floor, avoid the traps, hit the middle, go to the rim. Tic-tac-toe. Waterman. Working in space, he'll pull it back out wisely and go to Hall. <laughs> Mark Purcell's Avery in the corner. Now Mark Pope is not one to fool around with time and score. He wants his team to keep attacking. Don't worry about the score, but they have a certain style. They want to impose their will throughout the game, and they don't want to start holding the ball. This is obviously way too early to think about that, but their last few possessions, better job of attacking and not worrying about organizing. The quick trigger by Nell, no good. Rebound by Avery. Avery really not sure what he was going to do there, and he paid for it. Well, he just had nowhere to go. He's got to slow down and give the ball to a guard. Nell weaves through traffic. He's rejected by Allen. But we've got a foul. That'll be the third on Shamari Allen. Check that fourth. Good job on the Mel just creating that bounce and then that one off balance. It just looked like Nell had a good clean look. He should have just stayed away from the fouling of Nell. Trevor Nell really responding to adversity so far this season as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast was sidelined with an injured foot came back against Iowa State on January 27th and had four games where he just really could not find his rhythm and he has discovered it over his last two. Ten points against Kansas State and tonight you see him on the free throw line with 16 after that move. C.J. Walker controls and goes to Allen. Darius Johnson in traffic off the window. Good job by Johnson. He needs to force that issue a little bit more on ball reversal before the defense shifts. Get into that angle from the wing because he can finish in traffic. Woo, talk about finishing. The rim runner. The lob catcher. Atiki Ali Atiki. I think he gives him a little bit more athleticism. That's why Mark Pope put him in the game. They were bothered by the length of UCF, but Atiki's given him some good minutes, and here's another one. Oh, he went up to get it. Allen sat him down. Crowd doesn't like it. Atiki doing a nice job of spacing out, now crowding the dribbler and finding an angle on the other end. So going to the free throw line. So Mark Pope realized that both Khalifa and Traore were having some problems. They didn't have that good flowing offense and ability to score in the paint against the length of UCF. And they were bothered by it. So he's put a Tiki in and Tiki's a little bit, obviously he's longer and he's a little bit more athletic and he's had some good minutes. A tough customer. Has a wrap on that right thumb, which he'll have operated on early next year, early in the offseason, I should say, as Mahoski comes flying from above to tap it in the offensive rebound. Langford controls off the 16th turnover of the night. Allen with the flush. Then the lead is nine. Boy, that happened fast. UCF is not relenting. They are keeping the pressure on, playing with toughness. Timeout by the Cougars as Jackson Robinson found himself in some trouble. 25 points on turnovers tonight for UCF. I mean, that is the exact recipe for Coach Johnny Dawkins wants his team to employ to win games like this. We'll see if they can keep it going here. 
Nice job catching up by the Knights defense. And here is the maestro, Dallin Hall. Drifts to his right, finds daylight! Glides to two! Uh, Hall does such a good job of keeping his head up, finding the open gaps, usually looking for a pass. That time, no one came over. Johnson, aggressive again, shot at a three-point play. Become very physical. And we could be on the cusp of a seismic shift. Johnson will have two free throws. He was an 80% free throw shooter, bends his knees. And hits the first. No easy task shooting free throws for opponents at the Marriott Center. They are right into the student section. Well, he knew something happened. Darius Johnson's rock tough. He didn't know if he hit the floor in an awkward way, but he was grabbing his face right away. He did, that didn't feel good. <laughs> but that felt good, making two free throws, and now BYU's got to tighten up. UCF has made three of their last three field goal attempts, shooting 49% on the night. When they lost in January, they shot just 29% from the field, losing to BYU. Payne dialed up the triple, in and out. Well, you want your team to play free, but that's not the shot that UCF wanted. Payne's made three threes on the entire season. They need to work the ball. Allen Hall does a number on Payne up and under, toying with him. Now that's the change of direction, body control, eyes up, using the rim as a protector. Jalen Sellers, that would have been big. Off the front of the iron, spilling to the ground. Waterman in Payne, check that Nell in Payne. Allen Hall, so good creative understanding it's like playing in your driveway a little one-on-one -on -one. I dare you to stop me in that time UCF so spaced out on the perimeter worried about the three-point shooters there was an area to move and go for Hall all the way to the rim that was 6-4 against 6-10 Hall stayed close to the ground and used his quickness to convert Trevor Nell goes to the free throw now. Opportunity to extend a nine-point advantage. Pete Souza alongside Coach Tim Welsh here from Provo. Down the stretch we come. Crucial free throws here. Nell hits the first. Three twenty-four left. Nell has done a nice job getting to the free throw line tonight. He is 10 of 12. Look at a look. 10 of 13. Well, UCF has to put pressure on BYU to defend them because they get to the free throw line, just kind of power the way down there and not force it on the perimeter. <laughs> Allen among the trees somehow sprouts to do. That's a good job. Allen's done a really good job tonight just finding an angle to the rim. This UCF team is tough, coach. Whoa! Waterman runs into a brick wall. Omar Payne inflicting pain. Nice to see Waterman pick up to his feet. Waterman was bound and determined to get there. And this is what Mark Pope told us today. We are not going to nurse the clock. We're going to keep attacking. We want to keep our identity throughout the game. That's why Waterman attacked. He didn't pull it out. Got an eight-point lead. You have to keep attacking. That's what B BYU wants to do, and that's what Waterman did. And that was a really revealing remark made by Coach Pope earlier today. I saw that you kind of picked up on that. He, he said, this is who we want to be. Even if we fail in the moment, that will make us better down the stretch. Take a look. The 2024 Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. Not too far from now, and we can't wait. March 12th to the 16th at the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Every second available on ESPN+. Plus.
Knights on the ropes. Ten point advantage for BYU. Langford into the game, juggles it and goes to Jones. Khalifa in space with Johnson, bodies him. And UCF will go to the free throw line. That's what UCF has to continue to do. Force BYU to guard them off the bounce. They've become more comfortable in the half court attacking and, and getting to the line. Which will allow them to set up the press on a make. Six free throws attempted in this game. It has been physical. Dallin Hall. Looking like the professor from those N1 videos. He's got that ball on a string, no doubt, but UCF's doing a good job of defending. Jackson Robinson. Once again, a big shot for the Arkansas transfer. Last game, he sealed the deal against Kansas State. Extends the lead tonight. Well, Johnny Dawkins not happy on that last defensive set. Leaving Robinson too much room in the corner. They got caught ball watching. and Robinson has been feeling good about his perimeter game in the last couple. UCF can ill afford any kind of a score here. Hall drops it off for Robinson. Too strong off the window. And here comes Johnson. Time is of the essence for the Knights. Langford cutting to the hole. Can he finish? He can. That trims the lead to nine. When UCF has been aggressive tonight, Coach. To your habits, and that time, that's what happened with Jones. UCF has been out here since late Saturday. They came right to Provo after their loss at Texas Tech. Extended stay for the Knights. They will have to turn up the heat now to make that a joyous ride back to Orlando. Baseball pass from Nell. Paul somehow tracks it down. Finds himself in trouble and calls a timeout. Well, that was amazing. I thought that was long gone, coach. A good job by Nell. But he's going to get a standing ovation when he walks into school tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how BYU handles the pressure. Sellers, quick foul on Waterman. So 30 of 34 on the night have been the Cougars from the free throw line. Himself, Noah Waterman, 8 of 8 from the charity stripe. As a coach, I, you know, obviously you need deep in it your whole life, but I, you always hear about a guy like Larry Brown talk about, hey, free throws, free throws, are we getting to the line? This has got to be encouraging for Coach Pope. Absolutely. Yeah, because UCF makes you feel uncomfortable on offense. And they've made BYU feel uncomfortable, but they've handled it well. They played through contact. They've been tough, and, and a tough move by Johnson. Yeah, Johnson out of his comfort zone finishes, and maybe that was his comfort zone. Just taking the contact as another foul on Sellers. So we'll go the length of the floor. Eight-point BYU advantage. BYU's done a much better job in the last eight, ten minutes of this game handling that UCF pressure. They were a little uncomfortable at the beginning of this half when UCF started popping the press on them, but instead of kind of pass the ball, they just made plays, made basketball plays. I think that's what Mark Pope told them, just Take him off the dribble and go to score. 
You know, you looked at the numbers going into this game. Here was third in the conference, 32nd in the nation, UCF holding opponents to 65 points, right? On the other side of that, BYU averaging 83 points, first in the conference, 19th in the country. Well, BYU's won that battle, 83 points tonight. Sellers trying to take a bite out of that, and the lead is six. BYU never got control of the game, but they're hanging around long enough, and they're... Johnny Dawkins has pushed all the right buttons here down the stretch with, stretch with his pressure and his lineups. Robinson under pressure. Johnson looked like he had all ball, but coming from the backside was Avery committing the foul. Well, that's what you want to do if you're UCF. You show some pressure, see how they react to it. Be a little early in the. You want to give your press a little bit of an opportunity, but. They're doing a good job of extending this game. Robinson, 14 points tonight. Leads the Cougars in scoring on the season at 13.5 a clip. Above his average this evening, his team up eight. Ball's out of bounds. Last touch. It looked like by BYU. So Johnson set to inbound. That's one thing you don't want to do if you're BYU. Let Johnson just dribble up the length of the floor and be afraid to foul him and let him get all the way to the rim. Avery reels in the inbound. Drops it off for Johnson. He strokes a three. The rainbows go splash. Five-point game. Robinson in the corner in some trouble. Did he step on the end line? No. There is a blocking foul. Johnny Dawkins wanted a hook, but UCF being fair. Playing in his 78th game for the Knights. His 58th start tonight. Like a true leader, he is still on his feet, cheering on the rest of his squad as Jackson Robinson hits his first free throw attempt. One free throw attempts tonight for BYU. They have made 35 of them. Shamari Allen wiggles to the hoop. He is fouled, and he'll have a shot at two free throws. And this is what BYU has to be aware of. That UCF is just going one on one, head down, and trying to get to the foul line. With BYU, I might think of. Put that zone up for a minute, a, a possession, just to see how UCF reacts to it. See if it just slows them down a little bit instead of just putting their head down, going in the rim. Especially now with Johnson out of the game, they have a lot of three-point threats out there on the floor. Allen misses the first free throw. Second attempt is also no good. Mahovsky with the board. Three-point attempt is no good for Antoine Jones. Knocked out of bounds. Another opportunity coming up for the Knights. How about that sequence? You see, I thought you still have time to go get see, to create for himself as well. So efficient. Ten points on four of six shootings. Five assists and five rebounds. Mahovsky step back for three. The issue is still at hand here. The lead is four. And we'll go to the free throw line once again. Now, BYU was really concerned with Jalen Sellers on ball side. And Mahofsky did a good job. He just kind of floated to the opposite wing. Robinson way late on the contest. Showing great awareness to know where he was on the floor. Well, Robinson lost him for some reason. Sometimes defenders forget that the you watch the ball they're caught ball watching but the guy inbounding the ball can't score <laughs> <laughs> Rob
Robinson. That's pretty basic, isn't it? Sure is. He atones for it, making both free throws. Time running out on the Knights. Allen drops it off for Avery. His three is no good. Allen flies from up above. We'll go to the free throw line. Both of these now, we have a four point game. Well, this is the agonizing thing if you're Mark Pope, just you're trying to hang on. And UCF is creating these opportunities with their aggression to the rim and on the backboards. Allen hits his first free throw, shooting into the teeth of the BYU student section where opponents shoot 64% on the year in the second half. In the first half, opponents in this building shoot 70. Allen, looks like he might have missed that one on purpose. Seller with the rebound. Here's Mahovsky. The lead is two. Johnny Dawkins has pushed every button correctly, whether it's substitution, time and score, extending this game. Mahovsky has had a coming out party. So he has to be careful here because UCF's going to foul, but they're going to try to get a quick steal as well. Right out of the gate. No. Inbounds it to Robinson. He is quickly accosted and fouled by Langford. UCF just doing a good job of keeping it alive. Sellers, just really good presence of mind not to try to force the issue that he knew Mahofsky was right behind him wide open. So we go to the free throw line where BYU has 38 makes tonight. That is the third most in school history. School record is 40. Mark Pope giving his team all the options available. And I'm sure they've worked on this in practice because on a miss, you know, will they foul? They've got to switch everything. And not give up the quick three, which could result in an offensive rebound for an open three. Robinson's second attempt converts. That was huge, making it a two-score game. Mahovsky again for three. Barely catches rim. Allen for three. Knocks it down. Point five seconds left. Allen saying, hey, he fouled me, pointing to Nell. Well, they're going to they're gonna look at whether it was a two or three. That's, that's a, to be honest, an answer to that. And that's good. That's good refereeing because sometimes as the TV analyst, we have different monitors, but we don't in this game. So here we go. Nell into the forecourt. It is picked off. Allen with the shot. Off the shot clock. And boy, we got our money's worth here. Absolutely. Both teams just really good effort, but both teams intelligent.